welcome to again to another episode of This Is My Story, This Is My Song. I'm your host, Dean Ashfi, and uh, this is a show where I share with you songs that I have written over the years and uh, a little bit more of an intimate setting like this. Kind of tell you what I was thinking when I wrote the song, how the song came to be, uh, little uh, little tidbits about songwriting and uh, and stuff like that. And uh, hopefully you get something out of it and uh, we're able to share a connection. So uh, we're here every week. You can find us on Facebook at This Is My Story, This Is My Song. Um, you can also like my YouTube page. That's Enosh Fett, E-N-O-S-H-F-E-T-T. -T like uh, Boba Fett in Star Wars, if you're a Star Wars fan, obviously. We've got the Superman connection, we've talked about that. And uh, this week, we are talking about another song, uh, obviously that I've written, because that's what the whole show's about. But um, Anyways, uh, <laughs> this week we're talking about a song that I wrote um, called Wherever You Are. And uh, I only have one recording of this song, and it's not a professional recording of it. Uh, back when I was, oh about 21 years old, uh, someone bought me a four track recorder, you know, tapes, you know, old school. And uh, so I started playing around on that four track recorder, started learning about recording, the, the process of recording. And uh, this was one of the first songs that I wrote while I was uh, dabbling in that. And uh, it's one of those songs that uh, I don't know, it just kind of stuck with me. It's been a different type of song, and every once in a while I'll pull it out, and uh, people will, will say, wow, I, I really like that song. And um, I did a couple of weeks ago uh, for some friends of mine at uh, my church, Orchard Ridge, for our youth group, and a lot of a lot of the kids in the youth group and our, our youth director and everybody said, man, I really like that song. So I figured I would share that song with you today. So um, what happened was I, I, started, uh, I started tinkering with my four track, and... Um, just kind of came up with a chord pattern. I was actually, when I when I wrote this song, when I came up with the music for this song, I was trying to figure out uh, a worship song at the time that I was trying to learn. And uh, I, I kind of took a little bit of it, uh, a little bit of the chord progression, and um, and then just it developed from there. I, I kind of took off from the original uh, idea of the worship song. And uh, I don't even think you'd be able to recognize the worship song in what I did because there's so much more added. Uh, like I said, it was only probably like three or four chords that uh, that I played in, you know, in uh, succession. And and sometimes, you know, they, they people talk about that how uh, you know rock music and things like that is uh, is basically a um, a thieves' uh, art so to speak. I've heard it called that a thieves art where pretty much anything that you've heard has probably been done by somebody at some point in time. Uh, so that's why a lot of times you'll hear things that uh, sound the same and um, kind of pretty much are the same. And uh, early on when you start songwriting, um, you may find yourself doing that, you know, that you, even if it's subconsciously, you don't mean to do it. You're not trying to steal somebody else's idea or some, some pattern that somebody else has, but you know, you get things ingrained in your head, you know, and then you then you wonder, was that a real song or did I just make that up? I'll never forget until, and this is no lie, until the time that I was about 19 years old, I honestly thought that I had made up the song uh, Electric Avenue. You know, that song, you know, we're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue and then we'll take it higher because I had heard that song when I was a kid and I didn't hear it again for, you know, like almost two decades, you know, I mean, seriously, like 15 years. I remember hearing it when I was like four or five and I got to the point where I was like, I mean, did I make that song up in my head or was that a real song? I don't know. And nobody knew what I was talking about. None of my friends knew the song. And so, um, but I say all that to say that sometimes, you know, you can be inspired by another song or, or another songwriter and something they do and you're able to embellish on something that they did and make it something completely different than what they did. And, you know, I mean, obviously you don't want to copy somebody and, and plagiarize what they did, but, you know, sometimes you get ideas by watching other people and that's okay. Um, so I, I started playing that and I, I kind of came up with my own little thing. And, and this song is um, a little different than the fact that uh, there, it's almost got kind of like a, an Oasis kind of feel, the band Oasis. Uh, parts of it were inspired by, by a sound kind of like that. And then um, also, uh, but when, once it gets into it, you'll see once it gets into the bridge that it, it almost has kind of like a Santana kind of 
uh, thing. So kind of like this kind of Spanish flair a little bit. Um, so it's, it's a real kind of different song, unique, especially for me. Um, I haven't written a lot of songs like this song, uh, wherever you are. And uh, basically the song just talks about uh, the, the, first cor the first verse is inspired by the poem Footsteps. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with that, uh, where it talks about how, you know, I saw footsteps or footprints along, uh, did I say footprints? Footprints along the, uh, the beach. And uh, I asked, you know, I saw two sets of footprints and I was asking Jesus, you know, uh, why is it sometimes I see one set of footprints? And Jesus said to me, that's when I carried you. And so uh, that's what the first verse was inspired. And then the second uh, verse just kind of talks about that, you know, sometimes we, we allow our egos to get the best of us. And uh, we think we're a little bit more important than we are. And, uh, you know, the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. So the best that we can do, you know, is nothing compared to God's righteousness and his love and, and his, and his, his very being, you know, it's, it's just, we can't compare. And that's why we need, uh, the gift of salvation and forgiveness for our sins. And so that's what the second verse deals with. Some, it goes on to say, you know, sometimes, um, I'm seduced by pride and think I'm better than the rest, but my righteousness is as filthy rags and fails when put to the test. And then it just calls out to God and say, God, forgive me, you know, humble me, um, you know, and, and make me what you want me to be. Uh, and then the, the chorus just says, Lord, you know, you come through in time, uh, though at times I am blind and I can't see where you are, uh, you know, but I, I long to be wherever you are. So that's wherever you are. Um, I will play the recorded version off of my four track, uh, complete with a couple of bad notes here and there, but it's, it's a pretty decent recording. Um, and, uh, I hope you enjoy that, and if you would like to know more about how to get that, there will be information after the video about how you can uh, uh, purchase that song and uh, have it for your very own. And I don't know, one day I may do a, a, a better recording of it, I don't know, but we shall see, because right now that's all I got. So I hope that you sit back, relax, and enjoy this song, wherever you are. Is a 
as filthy rags and fills when put to the test. Lord, forgive me. Lord, humble me and put me in my place. Lord, I long to be a man of integrity. Times I am blind and I can't see where you are. I will never fear, for I know you are near, even when I go far. You show me the way when I'm humble and pray, it lights up like a my desire is still just to be in your will and to remain wherever you are. Every time I compromise. I kill a part of me Lord, I kill a part of me When will I ever realize The way to stand is on my knees Lord, I'm down on my knees Everyone wants freedom They don't know what freedom means That's when you're truly free, truly free, truly free, truly free, yeah, yeah. Truly free, truly free, truly free, yeah, yeah. Lord, I long to be, long to be, long to be truly free, truly free, truly free, truly free. Time, though at times I am blind and I can't see where you are, I will never fear, for I know you are near, even when I go far. You show me the way when I'm humble and pray. It lights up like a star My desire is still Just to be in your will And to remain Wherever you are There it is, wherever you are, and I hope that wherever you are uh, listening to this show, that uh, that you'll let me know what you think so far. Uh, you know, a few shows in now. Um, are you still interested? Are there songs that I've written that maybe you'd like me to uh, talk a little bit about and uh, share with you uh, how they came to be? Or um, maybe you're wondering what they mean, what was Enosh talking about in that song? I'd be happy to uh, share the song that's on your heart. Um, if any songs that I've written have touched you in any way, please let me know. You can email me at Enosh Music, that's E-N-O-S-H Music, all one word, at hotmail.com. You can contact me on Facebook, like I said, here at uh, the our Facebook page at uh, This Is My Story, This Is My Song. Um, or, of course, you can uh, let me know in the comments section here on YouTube. So uh, until next week, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your encouragement, and uh, I hope that uh, you're having as much fun on this journey as I am. And we'll see you next time here 
on This Is My Story, This Is My Song. Thank mm-hmm. you.